your new episode. Welcome back to I'm Cozzy. I'm now wearing Invisalign and we're going to break down everything that you may have missed on My Dearest, explain some tragic history and point some odd things that are happening in the background. Let's break it down. The tragedy of Soyeon Seja. Soyeon Seja and Mina Seja Bin have died and the show took an alternative approach to history. He, Injo and Soyeon Joshi did not poison or murder the crown prince. Rather, he died from illness. Even though the writers did not explicitly state that Soyeon Seja was murdered, we see Bina Seja being suspicious of Lee hyung the doctor that Injo sent to tend to the crown prince and historically this person was actually in some kind of relationship with Soyoung Chul-shi. Perhaps they're just putting it on a cliffhanger, neither confirming nor denying whether Soyoung Seja was murdered or not. Yet the show definitely seeks to depict Injo as this delusional and fearful person who constantly feels like he's being threatened. Even Kang Min's movement was enough to convince him that she was going to bring the portal door from Ximyang and overthrow him. I mentioned that one of Yonin's media points is that it does not focus on the royal family. Even though we see a shift towards focusing on what's happening inside the palace, everything is somehow creatively linked to Ki Che and Chang Yeon. So far we know that Yi Jang Yeon is confirmed to be Chang Hyun, the real life historical figure who was an interpreter during the reign of Injo all the way to Suk Jong. And Chang Yeon for some reason said that he's the leader of the rebellion Ku Yang Chan but is also the interpreter that Injo is looking for in episode 20. Kyuche's Injangdo keeps reappearing. This item has appeared throughout Yonin part 2 and it's not a coincidence that it's reappeared again in episode 17, 18 and 19. Since part 2 aired, Kyuche has been selling Injangdo to Soyoung Chushi. Up until this point, Kyuche has never suspected anything sinister about Soyoung Chushi because it was purely business. However, in exchange for purchasing it at a high price, Soyoung Chushi has asked Kyuche to prepare an item for Queen Changyo Wang who was was probably around 14 and 44 years younger than Injo. Kyuche obviously refuses, but then something makes her do it. Do it. In most K dramas, Injang doors appear to be used by women as a self defense weapon or to take their life when their chastity has been undermined. But really, it was almost used like a Swiss Army knife and carried by both men and women since the Samguk Shite. In any event, if we combine the meaning behind the Injang door and what has happened so far, we can either interpret this as, figuratively speaking, Kyuche has given her self defense weapon away to a dangerous person who will use it against her, or the Injang door will appear as evidence to something that will ultimately implicate Kyuche as the prime suspect. This is because it wasn't made clear whether the injang door that Kyuche buried was one of the items that led to the crown princess's charge for treason because Soyoung Chushi requested it for Chungjong. Three things that are a little bit odd that we shouldn't ignore yet. I mean, who is this guy? He, without any question, decided to help Kyuche and Changyun escape the royal palace. Some people suspect that this person might be close to, or was close to the crown prince, or even Pong Yim De who hasn't appeared on screen yet but who may have secretly been asking those who are loyal to him to uncover the truth behind the letter that mentions Chang Yun's name in episode one. Why didn't Huyun Seja give the letter to Pyo Onggyeong? Instead he tuck it into his pillow which was pretty risky. Did he not trust him? Did he think that he was going to give it to Chang Yun tomorrow? A few people say that because of this scene from the teaser aka that Pyongyong will betray everyone linked to the crown prince but I mean why? Historically there are records showing that many of those who were closest to Soyeon Seja during um, his time at Ximyang actually reported back to Injo quite frequently. Some people have gone as far as to say that the person in the asylum prison in episode 1 is actually the Neguan that served the crown prince. Don't forget about the prisoners who were killed or sent back to Ximyang and who are now resentful of Changyeon and will most likely somehow try and seek revenge. I mean there are so many questions that need to be answered in this week's episode which is both exciting and a little bit nerve-wracking. Now that there are only two episodes left, what are your predictions about this week's finale? That's it! Bye!